Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight, and I thought while I had the Antic 16.1 64-bit here running in my VirtualBox machine, that I would show you how to set up the partitions for a UEFI install. So I'm going to hit the installer. This machine has booted in UEFI mode, and we're going to say, OK, I'm going to choose the Jesse repositories. You can choose the ones you want. Right now, testing's pretty solid it's not moving very much Debian's in a partial feature freeze at the moment so okay so we got the installer now this is VirtualBox and so normally in VirtualBox I would click auto install to just to install to the whole disk but the auto install for UFI machines does not work Now you notice it defaults to custom install that's because I've already actually I'm going to wipe a installation that's on this machine so I'm going to run the partition tool I can confirm that I have booted this machine in UEFI mode. So what I'm what we're going to do, I'm going to delete the old partitions. This is just gparted, if you've ever used gparted. And then I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to, it has to be a GPT disk, so I'm going to create a partition table. Well, I have to do the operations first. Okay. So let's do the operations first. We'll do the operations deleting the two partitions. Very fast in VirtualBox to do this. One reason to do this in VirtualBox instead of real hardware. So now I'm going to have a new partition, not a new partition, I want a new partition table. And I, want, I need GPT for a UEFI install. The MS-DOS partition doesn't work. Uh, it's not supposed to. Spec says GPT. Okay. So now we need partitions on it. Now GPT uh, for, for an EFI partition, you need a small FAT32 partition. I say 100 megabytes is gobs plenty. Primary partition's fine. I'm gonna make it a FAT32, 100 megabytes. Now I need a partition for ant for antics. Uh, so I need another partition. And again, it can be a primary partition. One of the benefits to GPT partition tables is that you can have as many primary partitions as you want. It's not strictly speaking true, but you're never going to hit the limit. Okay, so I'm going to have a. Uh, uh, I need to leave some room for swap at the end. I'm going to leave. I like to match my RAM, so I'm going to have a. I'm going to leave 1,024 megabytes of swap at the end. And that's going to be an EXT4 partition, and then this one is going to be a new partition, and we're going to format that one Linux swap. There we go. Okay, do your thing. Now there's one more step after we create the partitions. Okay, the partitions are created. And now we need to set the flag on this partition to uh, ESP. And it will set the boots and everything, boot flags and everything, the way we need it. And that's done. That's automatic. So that's done now. And now we're back to the installer. Okay, now that the partitions are set up, we'll go next. And we're going to say the root partition. And that's actually the only partition big enough, so that's the only option it's going to give me. Swap partition's already done, but it is there. None are existing. Fine. Home, home partition. You can have a separate home partition. I'm going to leave mine alone. File, style, file type is ext4. Change default partition label. I'm going to leave it as the default, mostly because I don't care. But if you care, go ahead. And it's going to run through the install. Now I'm going to pause this. It's going to take about five minutes, and then I'll be back at the bootloader installation. Okay, we are back, and we are looking at the Grub boot Grub installer now. And you can see that the default is now set to the ESP. That's that little 100 megabyte partition that we made. Um, so we will go ahead and install to that. I'm just going to do the Grub installation. Now, interestingly enough, you can install Grub to a GPT disk, no problem. And you can boot that disk legacy. The GPT specification allows for a special, what they call the protected MBR. It's not a real MBR, but it's a special area that the GPT system can deal with uh, that will allow the GPT disk to boot on a legacy system. So actually, uh, I suspect you could boot a GPT disk on damn near anything. Okay, there's a name, uh, all the system stuff. Uh, let's do the dolphin. Dolphin. Okay, next. And we should get the reboot prompt here in a second. All right, 
finish reboot now yes now we should come up with the UEFI grub screen okay here's grub that's a good sign because we installed it in UEFI mode so that's a good sign uh, we have a bootloader so this should work just fine now there is one bug with the UEFI installation for whatever reason, Windows installations won't show up the first time around if you're if you're setting up a dual boot. I don't know why. Uh, so I'll show you how to deal with that. Now, obviously, this system doesn't have a Windows installation on it because it's a virtual box. But but you do need to run a command. Just one simple command will take care of it. Call it update grub. So if we go into the terminal here and say sudo update grub and yes my password it will do its thing and it will find if you are booting windows it will find the other windows and and set it on there uh, i kind of gotten used to liking uefi boots now because grub also puts a the, the 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 system utility the bios utility the cmos utility whatever you want to call it the setup screen for the actual hardware it'll show up in the grub menu it's way easier than trying to you know hit f12 or, or whatever okay so at any rate so there you go uh uef gantus installed in uefi mode now what i just covered also applies to the installer in mx16 it's exactly the same when it comes to uefi for tips tricks how to's head over to annex.mepis.org or throw up a post at annex.freeforms.org this is dolphin oracle signing off have a great day